What is going on, everybody? Happy Tuesday, or whenever it is this is coming to you. Uh, this is Bobby Fi. I'm with my man Sheets, as usual, and we are going to be doing a PGA Tour breakdown for the Travelers. Uh, I feel like this is going to be a fun one. I'm really excited. We had a couple really close million sweats. Sheets and I were actually right behind each other. Um, at one point, it was two, well, two five, because I was tied with four people, but uh, in, the, in the last minutes before the million, I ended up 16th, Sheets ended up 20th. We were really close for that million. I'm, uh, I'm putting it all back out there. I'm ready to go big this week. And I'm, uh, I'm ready to go for, for a real big one. Sheets, what are your thoughts like initially about this and uh, what's going on in your world? Well, I definitely think the, the accountability of what we're doing is, actually has made me much better. Um, just the fact that we go through the process one day and I actually show the lineups I'm putting out a second day, I think it really just makes me play better in general. Yeah. So uh, we're just gonna, we're just gonna keep doing that. I'm gonna do the same, I'm, I think I'm gonna go the same amount I did last week. I'm gonna go probably, I'm gonna do that the bigger single entry, but for 200, and then I'm going to probably do 20, 20 or 30 entries into the million again. And uh, if those of you out there, you know, Bobby is, is going, going in the big one, the 888 for multiple entries, and you could get in, get in on some of that action on State Kings, I think, if you want. So oh, yeah, I've got a bunch of, I got about you know, 20, uh, 20 different offerings up on State Kings, if anybody's interested, but uh, nice. yeah, it should be a fun week, man. I'm, I'm ready for it. I feel like I've done the, like doing the research in golf, like, We've talked about this before about being game theory optimal in general and how you can win at sports that you don't need to know about. You've done it lately with sports like MMA and NASCAR by just a, 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 a information aggregation and then trying to play the best you possibly can with the information that you have. And honestly, that information is out there. You can find it out there. We are part of that information, and we're going to give you our thoughts on that. So, Sheets, tell us like, like your initial thoughts about this. You can share your screen whenever you want. Give us yeah, I'm going to share my screen. So what we're going to do, I think we'll do the same things we did last week, except a little, maybe a little bit better organi organization is we'll first go over the course and the overall approach. And then what we'll do is we'll go up from the bottom again and we'll see, you know, what interest we got, we have in certain guys in certain ranges. So, it, and I had a question about course fit in general. So it seems though this course is very similar in a way to the ones we've seen in the last two weeks with the exception of you can actually get away with, with, with bombing a little bit more on this, on this course without it punishing you as much. So while it's still kind of a cool, you know, approach shot type, uh, type course, you can get away with, with, with swinging a little harder at the, uh, from the tee. Um, and it brings me to an interesting point, though. You know, with, with every field being kind of like a major now, I mean, course fit is kind of an interesting thing to figure out how much you really want to wait because what you usually find, with, especially the last couple of courses, is when you're comparing people's performances – they're not against the same level of field, right, as they are right now. So in the absence of a real extreme, I, my, my natural instinct is to, I don't want to say ignore, but, but maybe underweight the, the, the course fit and course performance and course record type of thing. You know, and we'll, we'll get to it, but, but I, have, um, I have a couple of, for me, kind of easy fades that might end up being – somewhat popular um but what do you think overall about the course and course fit in general anything that i said make any sense or yeah absolutely it's it's, it, it's a good it's a it's a good uh course for bombers and for guys who are great on the approach now you have okay. the four best guys who are on the approach there's a couple names that stood out like that kind of interesting um i actually got this from you know reading a couple articles earlier today but you have guys like um like like doc redmond has been the best uh, the best guy one of the top four i think he's fourth or third or whatever on approach this this year um, he's a guy at a, at a low price, again, going to be low on that we always like to play. If you want to know why he's always – he doesn't ever quite make it there, but he's a guy who could be on a lot of winning lineups. He has the ability to shoot uh, – to put up a big number. The problem is he's incredibly inconsistent. But with that inconsistency, he has still been pretty pretty darn good. So he's a guy on the – on you know, just sort of looks like a good, a good guy for the course who's a lower price guy who currently doesn't plan to hold too much ownership, although I, I'd expect that some of the higher buy-ins that people will get on to him. But just uh, just wanted to throw that one name out there. But yeah, it is a, of course you want bombers and approach guys. I think DeChambeau is a, is a really everybody's sort of picking him to win it. He's looked good. He obviously is a bomber. Um, there's a lot of other guys that you know that I that I like in this tournament. Like there are all of them. It's been it's going to be another one where I think you're going to see low scores. There's only two par fives on the course, but you do have a lot of approachable par fours, and you're probably going to see maybe a number not quite as high as last week or with quite as many people up there. But I do think that you're going to see a number that uh, that's going to be, you know, sort of similar to what we've seen so far since the restart sheets. I have uh, I have 23 players in my player pool, um, which is probably like five more than I had last week. But uh, it's still kind of a low amount. And as I, we go through them, 
I do feel looking at us from a slate perspective that I'm have to, I'm going to probably have to do a little more of what we talked about uh, in the review yesterday was yesterday the day before where I said I have to be a little more careful with putting chalky guys with unchalky guys and 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 be a little more not as quite not as just random shuffly you know what I mean as I was as I was last week and when, when you get to see who I like we'll kind of talk about that a little bit um, so first of all I guess what I'm going to do is is who's the first guy, like the cheapest guy that you have that you're going to play, well, I'm going to say more than 5% of, you know what I mean? And listen, for me, it's like I'm not going to have nobody that's, that's that without having like 15, 20% of. So who's the cheapest guy, like scrolling up from the bottom, that you feel is worth mentioning? So I think you can – there's a couple guys who I'll shuffle in because I'm going to max out the one – you know, the, the, the million and all those. So I, 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 want, I want some exposure to these low-arm guys. I mean, we've seen it already with guys like Neiman last week. I mean, not to mention guys like Michael Thompson who was like – who was in the hunt last week, and I think he was like 0.25% owned. You're going to get some of that with these guys sort of having this time off. And um, I think that, you know, you're going to see less of it maybe this week. So I'm – there's a lot of good low-tier plays that I actually really like, but I also just want to stress before – it depends on your lineup builds because I do think that you can build a great lineup staying in the 8 to 9K range like we talked about last week, and it certainly paid off um, for both of us. We talked about what we were going to do when we did that, and it worked out really well. This same week – this week, I think that I want to I want to have more exposure to guys like Rory and DeChambeau, some of the higher-end guys than I normally would, and DraftKings has done a nice job pricing them up. So some of these value guys are going to mean – a little bit more maybe than they have in the past weeks. Although, again, some of the value guys have also crushed the last few weeks. So, you know, they just were guys who were completely off the board. But Cameron uh, Tringale, I'll have a little bit of exposure to him, you know, maybe like 6 7%, nothing huge, just the guy who I would mention down there. The next guy who I would have a lot more interest in, uh, Noto sort of turned me on to him, uh, uh, Harry Higgs. Um, just has been way better than, than the price would indicate. And, and as a guy who may not win you this tournament, but certainly uh, has an excellent shot to, to, to make the cut and, and, and make a, a reasonable run. I think the projections on him and the, and the way that, that he's seen by everyone else is a little bit underestimating. He's been, he hasn't played, you know, all that stuff, but uh, the course suit seems to suit, suit him pretty well. And he's a guy at 6.4 that I have some interest in. Um, Michael Thompson, Kevin Tway, these are guys who are like three to five percent guys. But then I do have interest in Von Taylor. Um, Von Taylor at 6,500 is the one I probably will have the most of the guys I've mentioned along. Him and Higgs will probably be fairly close. But the only problem I'm having with why I want to squeeze those guys in and why I may not take more of a – not a stance on them. I mean, they're not guys that I probably should want to take a stance on. But I do like Neesmith again. Again, it was, it was a, a good course for him last week, so I, I'm not going to sort of take that with a grain of salt. But – I do think at 6,600, playing good uh, golf right now is interesting. And I like Doc Redman at 6,700. Those are the guys I'm going to have the most exposure to on the cheap end. So um, the Higgs was my last guy added. Um, so he made my, he made my list. Um, the, the last guy that I threw out, the, the next guy that was going to make it, um, was actually going to be Vaughn Taylor. So I have no problem with that. He just didn't quite make it for me. Um, Neesmith, I have to make sure he's not too chalky um, because, I mean, I, don't, I just don't want to take a chalky $6,600 guy. But, but he's, that, he's in my player pool as well. And I did not get to Redmond this week. But one guy that – but two guys under 7K I did get to. One was, um, was Jonathan Vegas. Um, he's going he's gonna to make it in the pool. And also, um, uh, Munoz is going to make it in there. So, so for me, um, and also, also one, oh my God, one other guy too, also Ryan Moore. Um, so all, those guys all under 7K, and this is very unlike what I did last week. And I think what you and I are, might be under the same, same uh, approach here is that we're, I'm, I'm going to be probably looking to use some of the higher priced guys this week as opposed to last week. Um, so I am looking for more of these six, you know, under six K guys. So in addition to the guys that you mentioned, I would say Ryan Moore is going to be in there. Uh, and the other, uh, the other guys that I mentioned, Jonathan Vegas and Munoz. Yeah, I, I, they're all on my list. I actually have Ryan Moore written in at 10%. I have Min Munoz written in at 7%. Um, I just am going to mention that I'm going to play. I, I forgot to mention one name before and that's Carlos Ortiz. Uh, I will probably play him right around that or more. I really like this kid. I played him a lot. He's been really good this year and had a monster, monster Saturday last week and actually put himself, uh, you know, 
in contention really to, to win that tournament, had a rough Sunday. But I, uh, I think at his price, he certainly is another one you could, you could put on the list. There's a lot of these guys, and we're rotating them, you know what I mean, at this moment. It's still an early one. We'll, I'll try and get you another show. Hopefully, Sheeps will join me before, before we get the final, you know, information. And honestly, uh, we also have to have some concern that there's going to be potential uh, COVID tests that come back positive. It's just a reality of what we have to deal with. It happened last week with one player and Nick Watney. Hopefully, we don't have to deal with it again this week, but I, I – I hope I have a bad feeling that we're, we're probably going to lose a player or two for that reason or another. Um, usually you'll get some withdrawals between now and Thursday. Um, well, and adding that, that is not a fact certainly well, makes it likely. Well, I'll tell you, like for me, the, doing it this way is, was really helpful for me because it took us to go through this for me to realize how little I had outside of the AK range, which made me very confident about it. You know what I mean? So I'm kind of happy that we are kind of doing it this way. So let's, um, so, in, for example, let me I'll, – I'll start, like, for the 7K. So, I'll go 7K to 7,500 because I don't really have that many guys. So, the one guy that I'm considering – actually, yeah, he did make it was, – uh, was a guy who got a little bit of love the last couple of weeks, and he's been fine, but maybe he'll go a little underlooked this week is Max Homa. Um, mm-hmm. so, so, he's a guy that I have under there. Um, and then, honestly, oh, the next guy is going to be Billy Horschel. Uh, him is going to make my pool. Then two guys, Connors, Brian Harmon, and also Scotty Scheffler. Um, I, I didn't play him two weeks ago. He was a little popular, and, and last week I just kind of lost him. But I'm going to probably play him this week. So those are the guys that I'm going to play in the 7K range. I don't know if I'm going to play kind of a chalky Neiman. Um uh, and I also not sure what I'm going to end up doing with Hovland. Hovland, again, you know, you know, he's a huge part of my lineups last week and the week before too. I just don't, I just don't want to play 25% guys if possible. You know what I mean? Um, and if he turns out to be really, really chalky, I might end up just really underweighting him or maybe tossing him for now. He's in my pool, which is a very short pool anyway. So, um, so, again, at the top of that 7K ring, Neiman and Hovland, I'm a little concerned about ownership. But these other guys, I'll, I'm, I'm totally into playing guys like Scheffler, Harmon, Con, uh, Connors, and, um, and what did as, I say? As I say it, we have our first player with, who's already contested oh, Hovland. No. Oh, Cameron man. Champ, not a guy I was planning on playing anyway, but – That sucks. Certainly, uh, oddly enough, that's – I mean, seriously, of course it's going to happen right while we're doing this, but – Hopefully we don't get too many more. So keep keep going there, Sheets. Sorry about that. No, and that was uh, that was pretty much it. That was it. All I had from the seven Ks. Well, assuming that these guys don't have coronavirus, here's, here's the guys. Oh, that Jesus have. Christ! I have I have some interest in Homa. You know, maybe ten percent, twelve percent, somewhere around that range on him. Uh, Dylan Fratelli shot a really uh, really nice uh, round last week, or, or really no, no, I'm sorry, I got, I'm getting mixed up. Somehow I got uh, I got my guys mixed up there. Uh, I got uh, the wrong. The wrong guy. Fratelli did, did he play he played great. Yeah, it was Fratelli last week, right? Am yeah. I missing something? Yeah. yeah. I just can't I just uh I got yeah, so it was Fratelli who had the uh yeah, I'm sorry, but that wasn't actually who I wanted to talk about, but I do think he'll be in the mix. I actually leave him around six or seven percent right now, but nothing crazy. Um I might go a little bit higher. I need to do a little more digging. Uh, Streelman's played really well on this course in the past at 7K exactly, along with Homa, who you mentioned. I feel like I'll have a little bit of interest there, but not going to go absolutely overboard. I just believe that On is a better player than he's played so far, and I think we're going to see it as the as the time progresses. And at 7,200, I'm going to play him while he's, for the first time in a long time, going to be completely unowned, um, and that feels good. Uh, I'll have a, I'll take a shot with Oosthausen, played well here in the past but I'm not especially excited about it. These are sort of the, the whatever guys. Uh, much more interest. I have a lot of interest in Billy Horschel. I think that at, uh, at 7,300, he's probably my preferred guy in that, in that price tier, in that exact price range. And uh, Keegan Bradley would be the, the next guy for me, just behind Horschel. I think that he's uh, he, you know, another guy who shot really well here in the past. Uh, we don't know exactly what kind of form he's in, but is really cheap. And assuming that he's, he's normal, uh, certainly a guy I want some interest in, I want some exposure to. Mild exposure to, to Kokrak and, and Connors for me. I have a little more interest in Jason Day, who's played well here, even when he hasn't played, been playing well in general in the past. He's 7,500. He's so cheap that worth, I think he's worth taking a shot on. It's a wild card, large field tournament play. But enough of one where I might even have him like 12 to 15% in, in the uh, 
in the millionaire maker, maybe even a little higher, just because I feel like there's a guy, like he's a guy who I could see being in, in contention on, on day four if things break right. I know he hasn't been good, but I'm sort of want to put that aside and just play a little bit more of him. I love Scheffler and Harmon, but I just, they're going to be, especially Harmon, fairly high owned. So Jason Day is maybe a pivot or, hey, maybe you throw a lineup with all three of them together. My highest owned player in the entire 7 to 8K range, even though he's going to be high owned, is Hovland. I do like Hovland quite a bit. I have less interest in Neiman, although he played excellent. I think he finished second here last last year. Um, Hovland would be the guy for me that I prefer between the two. I'd rather take – Neiman is a, is a little bit streaky enough to where I can say that. And they're both young golfers, but I feel like Hovland's been more consistent and, and a guy I feel a little bit more comfortable with and probably going to be owned about the same. But, I, you know, you look, he's 100 cheaper. I think he's a better golfer. He's a little bit ahead of where Neiman is, although Neiman may end up being the better, the much better golfer eventually. Um, they're both young. I, I feel like Hovland is a little more experienced. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with him. And he ended, he also may end up even being lower on the Neiman. I don't know how that's gonna shake out. It's gonna be really close. But I like both of them. But I do prefer Hovland, and I'm gonna end up being below the field on Neiman just because I need to take some, some guys a little. Who I need to come off, off of a little bit. So uh, you know, maybe take a little bit of that Neiman ownership and throw it to JT Poston, who's played really well the last two weeks. For what it's worth, um, for those of you that are interested in this type of thing. Um, one thing that, that really uh, talk about course fit for someone like Hovland, uh, the, the, the greens are really, really big um, at this course. And Hovland has been very, actually very vocal about the fact that his short game has been atrocious. But he's um, been much better. Yeah, yeah but, but the point is, is that, is that he could, if, if he has more greens to play with and he doesn't have to worry about getting into a chipping contest, I think that um, – I think that's going to help him. And that I guess is one of the reasons why he's projecting well also, I suppose. But um, yeah, I'm with you. And, you know, you, you mentioned Louis Oosthuizen and, and, and the thing that maybe I'm just biased, whatever it is. I just don't like playing guys like Oosthuizen and Furyk and, and just these older guys that played well here 15 years ago. You know what I mean? Like, so just to correct you though, you did say the same thing about, um, about Sergio. And I said, I did. I hundred percent did. And, and I had some Sergio last week. And yeah, and, no, I was, and I was wrong. And I said the same thing. I also didn't want to play Kucher. You know what I mean? Like there's yeah. these, these guys just to me with this, with, with gray hair who just freaking just slap around the course. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's uh maybe that's uh not the way to play, but I mean, I'd rather take like a Hovland or a guy like, um, so fun. I was even going to talk about Cameron Champ, like just just as being like a bomber that you know always has a puncher's chance, whatever it is. But uh, not today. Um, all right. So move, moving ahead um, to the uh, that eight K range, which which suited everybody really really well. First of all, there are two guys that I'm not playing any of, and and um, you know just whatever it is. These two course fit guys. I'm not playing Paul Casey, and I'm not playing Bubba Watson. I'm just not doing it. Um, um, you're trying to talk me anyway, whatever it is. They're, they're, these are guys I'm going to have, have zero of. I'm also going to have zero of Sergio Garcia, um, especially coming off of that um, that performance where, you know, again, he was great, but whatever. Um, I think he'll get a, you know, I'm just not playing him. I'm playing zero of Jordan Spieth. Um, the guys that I, I struggle with, I don't want to say struggle. So Sun JM. So let's start, let's start with him. Here's my opinions on this. And, where I think I'm going to not play him is from this type of logic. And again, I usually I'm, I'm an overthinker. I am, uh, but this is what happened with Webb Simpson, right? So two weeks ago, Webb Simpson was chalky and he just, and he just missed the cut and it didn't matter. He came back the next week chalky and he just killed it. Right. So this week people are, I'm already, that's all I'm hearing is, well, this is the same thing this week. This is the sun jam week. And, and, you know, the excuse was is that he just is no good at that uh, that that course. You just don't play him there, and he's you know just eat it. And he's going to do great. I'm just inclined to just fade the whole thing. Like, <laughs> I think I just want to point out that for some JM, I think that he's missed like three cuts like in the last two and a half years, and two of them were at that course. <laughs> yeah, exactly, and that's you know whatever. So so I'm I'm probably going to be off of it. Um, the the guys that I am going to be on in this range is number one. I'm going to go right back to Patrick Reed again. I know he was he was one of your villains this past week. Yep. Um, as was me. As for me too. But the guy is just my type of guy. He loves playing. He's playing well. He's you know he gets mad. He gets happy. It's just this is this is my kind of my kind of golfer. You know what I mean? And he was and you know even his first round last week he was 
couldn't, couldn't get anything together. He was splashing it around. He couldn't find the fairway. And yet still he was scrambling and fighting and he just couldn't put anything together. I'm going to go right back to him pretty highly. Um, I'm also going to go right back to, again, maybe I'm just biased now, but I, I just kind of like playing this Fitzpatrick guy every week. You know what I mean? So I'm probably going to go right back to him. And I'm also going to go right back to, um, to a guy who really, I mean, like, just cost me a lot, yes, just because he just didn't do anything, was I'll go back to Finau also um, at 8,200. Um, the, the guys that I'm a little – I don't – I haven't decided yet what I'm going to do with Woodley. Um, but aside from that, I'm pretty uh, – just to review, like Casey and Watson, I'm, gonna, I'm going to have zero. M, I have just haven't decided yet what I'm going to do with him. Sergio, I'm going to have zero. I'm going to be pretty heavy on Reed, zero on Spieth, um, pretty heavy on Finau and Fitzpatrick, and Woodland, I'm just undecided. Yeah, I mean, so I would love to take the stands that you're just taking right now. I like that you're doing it. I, I'm playing more lineups, so I have the excuse. Yeah, so you can't. I mean, like – But I do feel like – I just want to point out, so Bubba's won this tournament two of the last five years. Um, he's playing yeah. really well right now. So I have some interest, but I feel like when he becomes chalky like this, I just, my inclination is to try and fade him. So I find that with the fact that I like him and that I, I'm going to probably end up somewhere near the field as a non-exciting, you know, answer. Paul Casey. So he has four out of the last time, five times he's played here. He's, he's finished in the top five. That's unbelievable. <laughs> like, um, I don't know what shape he's in or what condition, where he's at. I have the feeling that if he was this price and we'd just seen him play golf and he was somewhere just – even if he shot like seven under last week, I think you'd see him in like 30% owned. I think he'd be the highest owned player on the board. I really do. Um, but it's wild card enough to where, you know, it's probably near 20% owners. And it's hard to know what to do with him. Again, I'm probably going to end up near the field on him. I, the, the guys who have the most ownership in this range – and look, they're the chalkiest ones. I have some other pivots elsewhere. But I, I also like Fitzpatrick like you, but he's not one of my most my highest owned. I, I'm going to go right back to – I'm going Woodland, Finau, M, and uh, more – well, that's a little higher. I guess in this range it would be M, Finau, and Woodland are just my core. Like they're just all going to be really well represented throughout all my lineups. I'm going to ha have definitely some Jordan Spate uh, pivot lineups. The guy is all over the map in general, but can put up a huge number. One thing I like about Spade also, because he's so up and down, he tends to put up, like, higher scores than guys who shoot the same, you know, whatever they are, that end up in the same spot as he is, because he just ends up with weird things like he'll get his eagles, he'll have his three birdie streak to go with his triple bogey or whatever he's got going, you know. Um, but he's a guy who actually won here three years ago, and he's going to be 5% owned. And he's actually played – I mean, he's had two bad rounds and six good rounds in, out of eight so far. If you can string them together and even just have one not-so-horrible round, I think that you're going to see a, him with a, with a chance, potentially. And I also think this, co this course is, is, is a solid one for Sergio, another great guy on the approach, and I feel like it really suits him. So this is where I'm going to have most of my ownerships all in this range. In fact, everyone between 8 and 9K, I will have, ownership, I will have a, above 10% ownership in. Just a, that's just going to be where everything's at. I like you. Heavy, I, I'm, I'm, I'm Patrick Reed is just below the other guys I mentioned below the M Woodland Finau mark for me, but not much like right below. Like there, these guys are all going to be heavily in my lineups, and uh, I guess it gives you an idea of how I'm building. I also want to say like in my initial build for an 888, now it probably is not going to end up this way, but I built a lineup. Oh, I love Leishman too. Leishman, excuse me. Um, I feel like he this is absolutely a good course for him. Um, he's too he's way too cheap for what he should be. Um, you know, he's had three top 21 finishes in the last four times he's played here. Not, like, incredible, but he's so cheap, and this course suits him. So I love him in 8K also. So I'm really into this range. This is where I'm going to have, and like I was saying, I built in my first build. I, I just had nobody above – I think I have a lineup with nobody above 9K and nobody below 8K in that lineup. <laughs> All right. So I, 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 if, I, if I neglected to mention Leishman, that was, a, that was an oversight because he's definitely in my in – my, in Who my did you that? Leishman. Um, yeah, he's definitely in there. So, like, for, what I would say for someone like, and I know that your response is going to be, you know, we'll just play them both, whatever. Like, if you're going to play, like, if you're going to play Watson, and if you're going to, or if you're going to play Casey, I'm just going to, as, as the, as the experts used to say, I'm just going to find a way to find the hundred for answer. You know what I mean? Or the, or the 200 for Morikawa before, before playing uh, too much Watson and too much uh, Casey. That would, that would be my, retort to that although there's no reason why you can't play them all you know what i mean like but uh 
So, I mean, that's, so you go up into this range, it's 91 and up lanes. I just here's, wanted to say something real quick about that. And it's not like a huge factor, but by all the numbers yeah. I've looked at, um, yeah. the only thing that's interesting is that if you take an answer or take the odds on answer winning versus like Casey in this tournament, those two are heavily more higher on that percentage level than anybody else in this price range. Um, is that right? Yeah, while Morikawa may make just as many top 20s and top 10s, he is considered less likely by the, the odds to, uh, right. to, to – and the other guy who, you know, is just above them – sorry, I'll let you get back to your thing in a second is, – is Justin Rose. But they're all, those guys are all in the same range of, of being reasonable shots to win in this price range. Okay. So this is where, this is where I'm at uh, in this – I guess we could do – you know, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll stop at Kepka. So, so we'll, we'll go up to the, we'll do the nine Ks. So this is where I'm at. Like, like can't leave off the layoff. I'm going to have, I'm just going to have zero. I'm going to, I'm going to have zero Dustin Johnson. I was more than happy to take an 8,500 more than happy to do that. And I was very nervous about doing it. Remember we, we talked about who you're going to be most nervous about having, who you'd be most, most nervous about fading. I said right from the beginning that I was just very nervous with Dustin Johnson. I never liked playing him. I always thought that he was gutless and could never make a punt when you needed to. And, all this stuff, and in tough fields like this, I just never wanted him, but he was 8,500. I was kind of, what do they say, price enforced. Just play a lot of him, and he was fine. He was great, but but I don't, I don't need any of him. Um, I don't need, so I don't need any of Camley. I don't need any of Johnson. Um, I, I was going to wait to see about Justin Rose. For now, I'm not playing any of them, but I am certainly going to be back to answer. Um, I am going to be all over Marikawa, and I'm going to be – Right back to freaking Xander. I don't know what, what happened to him last week. He just kind of just had a bad bad week, whatever it is. But but um, I am totally going to go right back to him. So for me, in this range, it's going to be Answer, Morikawa, and, and Xander. Yeah, it's funny. I find myself preferring Morikawa over Answer this week, but I don't have a great explanation as to why. Because um, he's awesome. I think that you're – I guess I sort of project that the ownership would be – so what, what I love about Answer is that, look, if you watched him the other day, like, there was nothing he was missing. Like, he had, he had a chance to, to run away with the tournament. Actually, in my opinion, both he and Webb both missed so many putts that they should have made. And Answer just had about, about 10 lip outs, and I feel like it, I swear, in the last 18 holes. And I feel like he's, a, he's great at those courses because you have small greens and all that stuff. And, and not to say that he wouldn't be great here, too, but with the, with the high ownership projected on him, with – the fact that this is going to, like you said, longer greens, um, not that he's been bad, not that he's bad on the greens, just that he was so good at striking the ball last week. That was sort of what I was drawn to. And it might, might be less, less of a reason for him to be so precise, if that makes sense. And I'm also looking for reasons not to play some people because I have so much interest in a lot of guys. So I, I feel like I'm going to end up slightly below the field on answer at the moment, although it, it makes me nervous because he is a guy who I will have – you know, I'm definitely going to have him in some high buy in tournaments, some of the at least 100 or 200 buy ins or something like that, because I do think he's capable of winning this tournament. Um, it, it, I don't feel great about it. There's a, I told you I like these guys too much. I feel, I feel that way about Justin Rose as well. Like, I'm going to end up being probably a little below the field. I like Justin Rose. I think he should do very well here. I just find other guys I like a little better. I'm, I'm sort of erroring more with Morikawa and my, my sort of young guys build. These young guys have been playing well. And, you know, the Morikawa, Hovland, uh, Neiman guys and stuff. I, 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 I sort of just like all those guys right now. And I feel like they're playing a little bit better. And um, I'm just giving a slight edge to those guys over the Justin Roses, Dustin Johnsons, and the answers uh, in that price range. I do think show play is going to be overlooked a little bit. So I might th try and throw him into a couple lineups. I think that with Patrick Cantlay getting more ownership, which would certainly make sense if we'd seen Cantlay play recently. But because we haven't, I'm, I'm sort of inclined to go maybe, again, a little below the field or with the field on him. Whereas with Shoflay, I probably want to be a little bit ahead of the field with him at low ownership. Just a much better golfer than he gets credit for. Always does well. And even last week really struggled twice and still ended up putting up a six under. Like, you know, just not a guy I worry about too much. And at 9.6, it's the best price we've seen him at in a while. Um, but I, and again, with Cantlay, I just, you know, I'm not, I, I, this, is, this whole range of these 9K guys outside of Morikawa, I feel like I'm just going to be sort of below or near the field. Okay. So – the way I am, so we go up to these top guys, um, and again, again, I hate to summarize so quickly, but 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 you know we both did our research. You know what I mean? And and, and this is this is just kind of where I'm going to be. Um, I, I'm I'm playing Kepka the same as I played Dustin Johnson last week. I was forced to play him last week at 8,500. I'm just I, I I don't think I'm going to play him. Um, 
I have heard a lot of like very, very sharp people in the golf community say that they love him even in, in cash or whatever. Just, I just, I'm just not going to do it. Um, the guy, and I'm also not going to play Webb Simpson at 10 five, although he's one of those guys <laughs> just see him just win again. You know what I mean? Like see him win again this time at, at 12% or something like that. We'll, we'll tilt me a little bit, but um, I'm just, I'm just not going to do it. These these other four guys, okay, so Thompson, DeChambeau, McElroy, and Rom, I mean, they're all really, really good, okay? And I, and, I, and I watched them all over the last couple of days or whatever, and you just how, – how do I put this? Like, we talk about basketball sometimes, or you, you can just see the difference between, like, one level of guy and another guy. Like, Justin Thomas, I mean, it looked like he was basically dead. And, like, next thing you know, he puts up a freaking round Sunday. He was, he was, like, he was like, running bad Sunday. And he's still, what, he shot like a 64 or something like that. He's an incredible he, golfer. He's insane. You know what I mean? And, so, and is he ever not in the mix? Like, ever? Like, yeah, he, this was yeah. the one tournament he wasn't in the mix. And then look what happened. He was the leader all of a sudden. So, so I'm going to play him a lot. I'm going to play Rom a lot. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play Rory a lot. I'm going to play all three of those guys a lot. And I'm probably going to have to eat it and, and play some Deshambo. You know, I, every, I just can't take all the public's – all the – all the group think, though, I just can't do it. Uh, uh, about how he changed. His ownership I mean, is probably not going to be that much higher. That's the strange. I guess. Part. I guess he's revolutionized the game. This one. This is a. This is a course where you can finally you can bomb the ball a little bit and all this stuff and all oh, this. These other courses weren't made for him. Boy, oh boy, and he still killed it. The guy's the freaking. I don't know, man. I. I, I don't know. I'm. 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 St- I'm going to be higher on Rory. I just am. <laughs> I'm going to be higher on Thomas. I just am. And I'm prob- and I'm going to be higher on Rom. Um, I'm not going to not going to play zero of him like I did last week, Deshambo. Um, but I'm going to be under compared to those to those other guys. And you know, if Simpson comes back and beats me, great, good for him. If Kepka beats me, great, good for him. But that's just where I'm going to be. Yeah. I, so here's here's the issue I've got. So I, so I guess based on second land, Lance, this is one of the great things about doing these shows is that even even when I would go through it myself, maybe not talking it over with someone, I guess that what I'm finding is that I'm basically not going to X out because I have too many lineups, but I'm definitely going to be underweight on everyone in the 9K range except for Morikawa. Um, yeah. I, because I like the 10K range too much. Um, I like Brooks. I will, I'll will. i be with the field, though, because I like the other guys just too much. That's the truth. Um I do think that when he when he's playing well, he looks like the best player in the world. Same thing with Justin Thomas. I mean, on Sunday you would have they, they looked like the best two players in the world, even though it didn't didn't matter for them in, in the end because they were a little bit too far behind. Um, Webb Webb again, this is a guy I'll probably be right near the field with uh, this week, probably in the I don't know twelve to fifteen percent range, maybe. I just don't think he's a. I think he's a great golfer, and I think the ownership probably won't get too crazy on it. I, I don't know where I stand with him based on I'd like to not play as much of him because I really want to play. The one I'll be the highest overweight on by far is going to be Rory. It's not even close. Who? Um, I'm all about Rory this week. This course is perfect for him. Um, again, great with approach and great and great off the tee. Uh, you're going to get him at basically the same price, the best player in the world at basically the same price as Shambo, DeChambeau with potentially almost as little as half the ownership. Um, that's interesting to me. And if Rory's in just barely in double digits of ownership, this is the time I think you want to try and get him in. Uh, I really like him on this course. He's the guy I'm favoring the most, but I really like DeChambeau too. And I've built lineups with the two of them. It's doable if you can find those six and seven K guys, which we've named some of. That, that you See, can I, don't, I don't know. Let's talk about this. Is it just, you just you can do it right here. Yeah, so just as we were doing that, I, I just kind of created that. I was going to say, what if you play two of these guys and you can get another 8K guy and then you got to find three guys under 7K you can live with? Um, I mean, you don't necessarily. You could play the 7K range with That's them. what I mean. I mean, like, if, if instead of that. So, you, yeah, you could play the 70. I mean, I, I like Horschel quite a bit in that 7,300 uh, for the cheap 7K guys. Yeah. Um, I, I mentioned uh, – also, uh, Keegan Bradley he played really. I really like Keegan Bradley this week. I, I just want to be very much on the record. Corey Connors, Jason Day. There's a lot of uh, it's, it's, uh, the Scheffler and Harmon. Scheffler and Harmon would probably be the favorites for me. Oh, well, you, you, yeah, but there you go. They you put your 6,500 and uh, 6,700. Uh, your yeah. Vegas and uh, Vegas and Redmond. Yeah, Redmond. that's just, that's just not winning. Um, Why isn't it winning? 
because all these guys in the eight to at nine K can but, but yeah, like if you're saying it like Redmond and uh and and Ortiz can't surprise people and come in the top twenty or top I'm sorry, top ten. Ortiz Ortiz was was in at the top of the leaderboard going into on, on Sunday. You know, uh uh Doc Redmond, you know, it's doable, man. Corey Connors, Corey Connors another one who's right at the top of the leaderboard going into Sunday. I mean I'm just saying, there's there's options here. Jason Day, uh, you know, out of the blue, like like I like these guys enough to where I'm willing to take those shots where I need to play them together. Or you could jump down and play the 6K guys. Even with all these guys, man, I I still think that there's a really strong argument for the the Redman um, Redman. Excuse me, who's the other one? Oh, oh Neesmith Smith uh, and Von Taylor. Those are my favorites of all of them. And you could you could play him with a Leishman or a, a Finau if you wanted to go that way, or Fitzpatrick you've got there. Like anyway, you want to go throw in Justin Thomas. You want to get really uh, that's the other build I guess you're going with here. But I like this one too. Yeah, this one this one has none of those studs studs in them at all. Um, am I gonna this one end up I'm, is this way I'm gonna end up doing again? Right, all my talk about playing Rory and all these guys, I'm not gonna be able to play them. So here's my thinking: just if I'm playing the 8K range. Um, where I want to play some Fitzpatrick and these other guys, and I like him and all that. I think Gary Woodland has a better chance to win this tournament by a significant amount. I think that Tony Fino has a better chance to win this tournament. I think Sung J.M. has one of the best chance. He's the best chance, in my opinion, of anybody in the eight to nine K range. Well, well, let's well let's talk about this for a second. So we go back to a conversation we had last week, the week before, and seven other times, you know, in other sports where. Our, the debate between stars and scrubs versus versus middling, right? And remember, we talked about this last week where I settled on the middling lineup. And, you know, I was going to say that, you know, you talk about chances of winning and stuff, that I would probably just want all these guys in the middle. But but how, can you win, like, if you can get, like, Thomas, if you play Thomas and Rory or one of them, like, what what do you need from your 6,800 guy to win the tournament. You know what I mean? Do you, did they, did, they don't have to win, right? I mean, like. No, I mean, usually you could have them come in top 50 and that would be okay. But last, if it's like last week where it's all bunched up, that wouldn't work. You know what I mean? Right. That's only because it was all bunched up and Daniel Berger hit a chip shot. If, if Berger doesn't, you know, <laughs> a million things don't happen down the stretch. You could have won with, with Michael Thompson last week. You know what I mean? Easily. And he was, he was what, 6,200 or something like that? You could have won with Carlos Ortiz last week. Um, if, if, you know, if things go a little bit differently down the stretch. So it's, you're counting on this being maybe a little bit of a different week. And honestly, as much as everybody's been bunched up like that and why I think it's going to, well, I think it's going to continue to some extent. I think last week was a, um, an extreme example of that. It just seems like we can't have this every single week where every, I mean, you have 30 players tied. Oh, I, don't, I don't know. From what I heard, I mean, this is going to be just this soft, this, this course this week. No, I, if, if they're playing 20 under again this week and everybody's it's gonna be close, it's going to be close, but I think it's, I'm just saying you're betting on it being slightly below. Yeah. And, yeah. and you're betting on it. So that's why I like the idea of playing Rory and DeChambeau or something. If there's try and play two guys who could potentially run away. Like, I mean, first of all, if answer, answer makes a couple more birdies and, and, and Simpson. And then, by the way, these, these guys, and I know you say this for a lot of players, but for guys who finish in the top, whatever, they left a million strokes on the, on the, on the yeah. course on Sunday. And they could have easily, if they run away and they're one, two by five, six strokes or four or three, four strokes, four or five strokes, whatever it is, you want, you, this is the kind of week where if you're going to have two guys who could do that, a DeChambeau and a McElroy, I could see that kind of thing happening with, or a DeChambeau or a McElroy and a Thomas. Um, even a guy like him, who I really like, the more I even think about him this week. Um, I would be trying to play a couple guys who could maybe get ahead of the field because I just, I can't. Otherwise, you're just speculating on a bunch of guys who are going to finish near the top. So what are you betting on? Just guys who are going to make a tough putt? You know what I mean? I don't know. I just – I don't want to treat it like it's a crapshoot. I don't think it is. Um, and while it might be soft, I do think you're going to see some players, you know, that are able to pull away a little bit more than what we've seen so far. I don't think you're going to see, you know, 40 players within three strokes or whatever it was on day four. Well, we'll 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 see. But again, I um so so it's interesting. I was um we're we're gonna I'm gonna stew on this a little more as far as I mean, if you did goes. think it was gonna happen exactly your way, I would encourage people just to not play the high owned players basically at all. Yeah. I mean, seriously, I don't think it's a bad strategy. If you're not gonna play a bunch of tournaments, why would you play high owned players when yeah. there's this much variance going on? And also, you have low owned players like Rory, 
<laughs> who could win the tournament. And I'm not talking, I mean, using him as your, as your high, as one of your higher own players might be a good way to go. If you're going to do a build that you really want to, uh, to have a chance. Cause you can play a lower owned high, high, high spend up with some of these other low owned guys. If we think it's a real crapshoot, then you mix and match and you play a lot of lineups. And by the way, that is something of what I'm doing. I'm just betting that we're not going to see the exact same thing every week. You know, Rory's not going to come out shooting one over to take him out of contention and then have to right. shoot and get back in, which he did. Um, and same thing with Justin Thomas. You know, he has the one over day, whatever. You're going to see guys with a high number, and, and if Rory can put four rounds together, those four rounds are going to be better than anybody else's best four rounds if they're at their best, in my opinion. So, anyway, that's it, it, it is an interesting, like, way of looking at it. Where do you need these guys? But the truth is, a lot of these guys can come in the top. We just, if they're all going to be bunched up, we have no reason to separate them as much. Well, that's the thing. well I mean, quite frankly, what makes it difficult this week is, is that, is, well, like, made it difficult. It made it easier last week because they, is last week they gave you freaking gifts with Johnson, Kepka, and, and uh, I guess those are the two most egregious ones at freaking 8,500. You know what I mean? Which made, which made, which, which made everything just kind of flow. Um, where now it's not exactly so easy. Right, they they priced up the yeah they did price up those guys and and Simpson for that matter. I mean yeah, yeah. and I mean look, it, that's why you do want to spread out some ownerships, but you still yeah. want to have to try and core have a little bit of a core. What's crazy, like that's what's great about what you did last week is that I mean you didn't have that giant core and you really you know you you did well with it. Um, yeah. I was too spread out, but I also probably gave myself a few more chances to had to hit a big one. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, for you, sure. actually, you actually did come in. You did better than I did. But yeah, I do. Yeah, I was. I was. I was there. I, they were all rolling together, and and I'm like, ooh, I have this one and this one and this one and this one. You were 20th and 25th, I believe, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's, I mean, that's pretty sick, man. Out of 30 lineups. So look, guys, we hope this was helpful. We'll get back yep. to you guys again with another one. But this is sort of an idea of just some of the ways you can build in, and it's it's not as easy as last week to just say to me. It, oh, it's a middling builder, oh, it's a spend up and spend down. I'm going to be doing some of both, and I'm going to be doing them together quite a bit. So, um, yeah, we're get, we, you know, when we, when we do a final, final uh, uh, review tomorrow, I guess, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to between now and then really focus in on, on mixing ownerships the way I want them also. You know what I mean? Like to make sure that I have a good amount of, you know, a, a, a chalk guys here with, with lower owned guys. And not just, like I said, just basically random shuffle my player pool, which is basically what I did last week. Yeah, if, if there was one big mistake that I made last week, um, and it wouldn't have mattered. Like, again, I want to stress this, but I could have still won. But it, I, didn't, I didn't have enough of my lineups where there, there was too many of my lineups where there was no one in, in, not in double digits. Now, they were all 10 to 12 or whatever. And that would work in, a, in an 888 with a couple thousand people maybe. But with 100,000 people, it's really just – you never feel like you have a great chance to win because so many people have you have the same players at, the, at that point. Right. And you sort of hope these other guys come through. So, Sheets, any final thoughts before we're done? No, I'm pumped. All right, guys, let's kill it this weekend. Um, for Sheets, I'm Bobby saying good luck, stay safe, and we'll see you at the top of the leaderboards. Okay, sounds good.